the commitment to it, how do you get the, the distributors who are in the room, how do you get them to be co as committed as you are to say, hey, you know what, we're putting a person on it. We're, we're, and this is where we see it going. Where do you see it going 10 years from now, as we talked about in Amazon, you know, what, what's the, the long-term plan to say, we're gonna be competitive with, with those guys, or we're gonna be competitive with, with what the basic needs of our customers are? I mean, where does this go from here, and what's the strategic plan from those who are above you who have already put you in this position, where, where does it go from here? Yeah, it really starts at the top. Um, you can have all the e-commerce uh, ideas you want from the marketing department, but if your executives are not the one putting it in your strategic plan, my position was created because of that, um, you need that buy-in from the top down. You need it to the regionals. If you have regionals, you need it to the branch managers. The branch managers need to be pushing it to their associates. This is not something that just happens on its own. You can advertise to your customers all you want, but your salespeople need to understand the focus, and that focus needs to come from the top. They have a million things coming at them every day, and it takes the managers to fine-tune what is most important, and what is most important to Springfield Electric is e-commerce. So what's been the, the feedback? I don't call it the pushback, but what's been the feedback from the salespeople and the branch managers who say, by the way, this is where e-commerce is going. And a lot of those sales guys are like, we've been doing it this way for a lot of, and I'm pretty, I feel pretty good about it. You're laughing, Della, we know. And I'm pretty good at it, so why are we doing this? What, what kind of feedback are you getting from them in terms of the direction that you're going? The big stumbling block in the beginning was getting the inside salespeople to realize you're not stealing commissions from them. Um, a lot of them thought, oh, well, if my business is coming through the web, then I'm gonna lose out on all that commissions. So proving to them that you're, you're having their customers do their work for them and still getting paid for it, that was a big piece. And that frees them up to place more orders for other customers so they can basically be doing two things at the same time. Mm -hmm. And that was a big piece. And now that we have our mobile app where we can um, have the salespeople using it in the field themselves, they, don't, they no longer get out their laptops and open up our ERP system. They can do it right from their smartphone. They can see availability. They can even send it straight to the warehouse to be picked right from their phone. They don't have to. It just makes their life so much easier. And once they realize that, the what's in it for me from the salesperson, the system has just blown up. So it's, that's a key piece. So Howie, all this has to get populated with something. That's where you kind of come into play. Um, we, I mean, we talked a lot about partnerships yesterday. We talked, Dirk talked a whole lot about partnerships today. You know, explain to me the commitment to partnering when it comes to e-commerce. Where's what needs to get done? What needs to make you feel good while you're making your your supply chain partners feeling good at the same time? So the first commitment we had was content. Content is king in the world of digital business and e-commerce, and so. We invested within our organization to work on getting distributors commercial data, attribute data, images, spec sheets, all those critical things, and I'm calling them base data because just that's the bare minimum you need to even get into the game, right? Then you've got to ask for enhanced content to start winning um, in the eyes of your customers. And so that's our first task was make sure that the products that are most critical are stock products which is most important to you, our distributors, have complete data and accuracy of that data. And we're able to provide those changes to them through the avenues that they prefer getting those data sets, whether it's through IDW, trade services, or even directly from us. Now we're working on other content elements, such as 3D imaging, videos, um, other digital assets that's gonna help tell the story of our products, the featured benefits, how much time savings is gonna to provide to our customers and to your customers. Mm -hmm. um, and that's our priority now. In the past, we didn't have investments around this type of data. Um, our management, initially, we had to build a business case, and the business case continued to show no incremental sales from this effort. So we finally came to a realization, this is the cost of doing business. And we've got built it in to our balance sheets and our budget every year. Initially, they wanted a two-year budget to get caught up. And I tried to explain to them, data is like your garden, right? It's not something you can just do one season and leave it alone. You've got to continue going back, enhance it, modify it, optimize it. Um, and so now we've got continuously investing in our systems, our people, um, and enhancing our data sets year over year. So 
really quickly explain the, the, the commitment. How many people do you have working on data? How many hours a, a year are they, you know, what kind of feedback are you getting from your distributor partners that says, hey, you know what, you're right, we're gonna do this better. How are you committed to providing the data that fills these, these websites? So we've got a data management team that takes care of our ERP systems. And their main focus is to make sure that transactionally the data is sound. We've got data quality metrics in there to measure and um, make sure that the data is going to all of our systems and to your systems. Um, and then we've got another team that's working on the data architecture. So the, the system side and also the data flow side, um, that's our current uh, focus today. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of commitment, I'm actually developing a content roadmap for our organization that has strategically where do we need to go? How do we create the best content mix based on the needs of our customers? We've got limited resources like you guys do, right? We've got limited capital to invest. So how do we best put our people and our investment in the best areas? And that's really where we need help from our partners. You guys need to tell us where do we need to focus in on. We can't go out and create all this nice content for every single SKU. For one thing, it may not add value to that particular product set. Uh, we need feedback in terms of what's working, what's not working, and then we will prioritize internally and focus on things that really matters to our customers. So Phil, how do you initially, uh, initiate that feedback? Somebody is, is providing you great data and you're thrilled. Somebody's not providing you great detail on every you know, product that line that you have and you need it. How do you have the partnering conversation as we continue to live in this partnering world? How do you have that partnering conversation that says, hey, we're committed to you, but this is what we need? How does that happen? Well, currently we do that at the uh, NAD meetings, uh, the buying group meetings, and any of the one-on-ones when the um, manufacturer distributor gets together for um, annual uh, discussions on uh, projections and opportunities to cut uh, channel costs. So generally, we already have that up front when we sit down with a uh, partner to discuss not only ways that we can streamline the channel, but improve the transactions with the customers. So that's an ongoing event, uh, looking for opportunities and uh, different technologies to make that work better. But so, and I don't want to go negative, but sometimes in that 91% who say they want to reimagine partnerships, what you talk about at a meeting might not be what's actually delivered. A lot of nodding of hats yeah. <laughs> isn't actually what's delivered. So how do you get over that, that, that hump, that, that difficult period to make sure that you're getting what you need and that they understand what the needs are? Well, generally, you either do it yourself or you find a third party that can help uh, during that transition because it is uh, difficult uh, to turn a ship on, you know, in a second. But um, um, you know, just having those discussions with the uh, manufacturers and uh, working with the, uh, you know, organizations like IDEA and, you know, getting the word out what distributors need. I know there's perception a lot of times that uh, there's data that's requested that's not being used, but, you know, eliminating those perceptions and actually showing cases, uh, working with an AD to, to put uh, case studies together to show what distributors are doing with this data and with their end customers, basically, I think that helps. But in the meantime, we just have to bring people in and um, you know, fill the void until the, the manufacturer is able to provide the data that we need. Pam, you're nodding a lot. Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> so we took a, a more direct approach, and our buying group did a, a data populating where we submitted actual SKUs. We all submitted SKUs, and then they merged those together to see where our overlaps were so that they could address specific SKUs that we all needed. Now that that's done for us, now I've taken that, uh, that data and analyzed it and come up with the items that did not make the program. And I've pulled those SKUs out and I'm submitting those SKUs directly to the manufacturer and the data, data warehouses to help. Here's my missing 35,000 SKUs that I don't have attributed data on. And I'm separating that by vendor, giving my priorities for which ones are most important for us to get populated. So I'm breaking it out into little sets. But I'm going back to the manufacturer, I'm going back to the warehouses and saying, here's where I need help. How can you help? I need your help. How can you help me? <laughs> and Della, since you're just getting started, how are your supply chain, for anybody who else is just kind of getting rolling, how are your supply chain partners able to help you as you're developing and getting going? What are they giving as feedback to you as you're, as you're starting to get going? Well, we're taking the same approach as, as 
Pam has taken. Um, we've gone back to, we've joined um, and we are pioneers of, in several buying groups on their e-commerce piece. And we're pulling data from them. So the good thing is, is, is the majority of what we need is actually going to come from our buying groups. So the few vendors that we have that fall outside of that, we're going directly to the vendor. And the good thing is, is they're, pre they're able to provide us with quite a bit. For the rest of it, it kind of comes down to if you can't give us the data, I don't have the personnel to go out there and scrape these, all this information. So guess what? You're not there. I, I don't have a choice. So it's kind of going back to the vendor going, I, I, you got to help me here. I want to sell this product. I want you out on my site, but I got to have something. So it, it's, it's a conversation we've just really started, mm -hmm. and we've really started with the buying groups because they give us the most. Mm -hmm. so, so Howie, I'm going to ask one question, but then a, a nice follow-up to it. So how do you respond to when, when your supply partners, supply chain partners come to you and say, I don't, I don't have the data, I don't, I don't have what I need? How quickly can you respond to getting one specific supply chain partner what they need? How committed are you to it? It all depends on what they're asking for, right? So if they're asking for attribute data that we, they didn't receive from their buying groups or through IDW, we have that data somewhere. It's not like we have it stored in a database. We've got to go through existing catalogs, speed facts, old documents, and we're trying to get that data together. We're asking product manager. We are highly committed in attributing every single one of our products. We built it into our PLM process. That has a quality gate, that you must have your attribute data for your products or we are not launching a product. We make content a priority nice. as high as launching the product itself. Right? So we are fully committed, our product management, our leadership, our marketing staff, fully committed to getting data set up the way you guys need it to sell. So for the suppliers who are here, don't think that I'm picking on you, we're going to turn this over a little bit. Okay? So Howie, you're you're the supplier and you, you supply your data and you put it in a data warehouse and you give it to your distributor and then you go to your distributor partner website and oh boy, is it bad. I mean, how do you, how do you address the fact that, hey, we don't feel that you're as committed to e-commerce as we'd like our products to look on your website? You know, that's where the partnership comes into play. Mm -hmm. um, I encourage all of our partners to reach out to your suppliers to kind of together develop the strategy together, right? What can you help me? What insights can you provide each other to help <coughs> enhance the experience of your e-commerce e platform? It goes both ways. We've got an e-commerce platform that our customer uses to buy products from us as well. We solicit their feedback all the time. How can we improve? We're about to um, embark on our next generation of our e-business platform. And we spend about 18 months interviewing, talking to our channel partners, and getting their feedback, developing personas, um, how to best structure the pages, give you guys the best experience, the personalization aspects of it. I encourage you guys to reach out to us and do the same thing. When you guys are in the mix developing your strategy for your, of your websites, your digital uh, content, um, your go-to-market content in terms of um, your apps, talk to us. Um, engage us and we can give you guys feedback from our experience with what works, what doesn't work. Um, and what has worked in certain areas and certain situations may not work in all situations as well. 